We have to call this meeting to order January 3rd, 2024. In attendance, we have Randy Iser, Jane Nevin Smith, myself, Amy Parsons, Joyce Chumblo, and Molly Keegan. In accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022, signed by the Governor on February 15th of 2022, I announce that this meeting of the Select Board is being recorded by Hadley Media, the Select Board's office via Zoom, and ask if there is anyone present who is also recording this meeting. If no one is recording, let the minutes reflect that nobody else has indicated that they are recording this meeting. 3.1 Consent Agenda Warrants AP 2424S, AP 2424, AP 2425, 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 Public comments. So the public comment period is a time for the public to bring their concerns before the select board. The board will hear public comments for 15 minutes. Please try to limit your comments to three minutes so that other members of the public may have an opportunity to speak if they wish to do so. Is there anyone here for public comment? All right. Excellent. 5.1 old business, um, license renewals. Um, so there is one company that has submitted their renewal, um, Kittleton. Uh, it's an automatic amusement. I'm so sorry. That says entertainment. It's an automatic amusement license. I apologize. That's a typo. Um, I didn't have, I didn't make a form because there was only one. So I just threw it in there. Um, it's an automatic music license. They've already uh, were approved back in September of last year for their first time. And this is renewal. Um, Y'all do have several businesses that are outstanding. And um, <clears throat> once I returned from the New Year's break, uh, I gave them a couple of days for the mail. But tomorrow I'll start going out with the renewal packets and helping everybody who's forgotten to get them in. So on the 17th, we should have a cleanup of everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to approve the Kittleton automatic entertainment amusement licenses presented. Second. All right. Motion by Molly, seconded by Joyce. All those in favor? Aye. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Um, 5.2 boards and committee acknowledgement forms. Uh, so we had requested that all boards and committees adopt the code of conduct and for the individual members to sign um, the acknowledgement form for the board and committee handbook. Um, this is an update of all the received adoptions and acknowledgements that we have so far. Okay. Question a for you before we go. Is that going to be on a yearly basis or is that going to be for term of the um, committee or the board? It's a term. How long the term? Of the term. Okay. And the committee itself adopted it. It's not a person, it's the committee. We just standard practice as with y'all's policies. Okay. And just question have um have you, 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 you mean? or <laughs> Carolyn um received any uh concerns about adopting it or approving it? She might have heard. I have not. The only the, some some people just flat out have not responded at all. And I've sent several emails. Um, <clears throat> and then, um, the, you know, the planning board is their elected officials. I was informed they will not sign as the planning board. However, um, I do believe the individuals for the other committees they're on that they're appointed to by the select board. I do believe they'll be signing for those. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's the only one I've heard back from. I think Lynn Latham and I had, uh, who's the library chair of the library trustees, she and I had a brief conversation about it. And I don't know where they settled on what they were going to do, but they have not turned anything in as of yet. Um, I really wanted to get y'all's feedback on on what next steps you want me to take. Um, 
Is there something as like liaisons that we could present, you know, to our whoever we're liaisons with? Well, I'm even wondering if like all of these committees have a chair. You know, like starting yeah. starting with the chair and then ask at least ask them to. So I sent a large email point. out because I'm just again I'm just wondering if people aren't doing that's it how it was it went to the chairs mm -hmm. yeah. and the chairs really have been reminded right and then like Amy says if we don't hear back from the respective chairs then the liaison yeah could reach out to so you would you would like me to reach out one more time to all of the chairs and then can you put a deadline on that like if you don't hear back by the 17th or if you don't hear back by March or April, February, February 6th. Um, and then I would let y'all know which one of your liaison committees that you need to reach out to. Is I, I just would like to have a clear yeah. deadline of what you would like. Uh -huh. That would be good to have good. you reach out to us just so we could reach out to them. Yeah, do you, like, I mean, like two weeks, I think that's appropriate. I think most people would be back from any holidays or vacations. Does that yeah, give you enough not... time, Jennifer? Does well, two weeks give you enough time or do you want... But for me, I'm just going to send them the email that I've sent them three times already and, and say, you know, the select board does ask that you review this and that you adopt the, the guidelines at your meeting and that you have your committee members acknowledge that they read and received the handbook. Okay. Or are there any there objections? Yeah. I was, well, okay, I, I did not do that. I can add the end or if objections. Are there any committees that only meet like a few times a year that might not have... I think I noted, if you look at the Community Preservation Committee, they are going to adopt it um, on February 6th. Okay. But when they got this email, mm -hmm. they had already concluded all of their meetings. Okay. And so I was in touch with the chair of that committee, and she said that that's their intention. Okay. So that could be it for others. Mm -hmm. Okay. So January 17th, if I don't have them, I'll contact y'all's individual liaisons. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Um, should we skip 6.1 until after the appointment, or can you, do you think it'll? Yeah, I think that's what we'll, we might we'll just talk to them about. Okay. All right, so 6.2, the DPW uh, committee mission statement and task, so that's an attached file. Um, is that something that we... That's, that should be yeah. And you, that's, on. That has been reviewed, right. and they approved it about an hour ago. So I popped it on there. So okay. Motion to approve the mission statement, unless somebody wants, to, unless we need to review you need to it. Read it. No. No. Well, I think the important thing to note is that there is a. a I think what we've been missing in other committees, we, mm -hmm. we're not giving them a purpose. And so this yeah, is just right. clarifying that, and they all discussed it and agreed upon it, and what the um, what the deliver deliverables were, were going to be, exactly what the role was that they would be working together to put the RFQ together, how the process was going to work, and that they're ultimately re re reporting and making recommendations back to the select board. It's as the governing. So the only question I had on it, Carolyn, was one of the deliver deliverables we talked tonight. Um, so that they're going to be charged with coming up with a timeline, and, you know. So, th so there's no right now. There's no timeline on the deliverables saying that these will be met by such and such a date. So, would that be kind of the next? Yeah, I, I think we would know better once the RFQ is put together. We know what the advertising schedule is going to be, the posting, and then because it is two phases, it's hiring the OPM first than hiring an architect. So I think as we get a little bit further down the line, we'll have some deliverable dates. Okay. All right, I'll second. I, I wanted to ask that you could appoint the committee for the completion or to term, mm -hmm. to, to the completion of the project or term, whichever your pleasure is, that that way it doesn't have to come back because this will be a multi-year mm -hmm. project. So that way they can just complete the project. And that's what y'all have done previously with other building committees. Yeah, I would say completion. Not a Make a motion specific. to keep the board members until completion of the uh, DPW building is finished. You want to just read who they are for the public? Yes. Uh, Jim Maximowski, uh, Scott McCarthy, Tom Quinlan, Randy Iser, Gary Berg, Andy Klepacki, 
Walter Zykowski, uh, Richard Bermucci, David Phil, and Carolyn Brennan. With David Phil Jr. or Senior? Senior. You should designate that. What? That it's Senior. I, he just doesn't have the, the two behind his name. Well, they're so many, David Phil. They, they looked at it, they read it, they were okay with it, but if that's something you want, I'll get back and say David, do you want to? I'll ask him. Let me ask him. It's not the turn of many worlds. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, motion by Joyce, seconded by Jane. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. And then do you want a motion, a separate motion to approve the mission statement? Yeah. You had already appointed the uh, committee. The so we had appointed them. We appointed them through the completion. Okay. Of the so, that so, so the second vote is going to be um, to accept the, accept the mission statement and deliverables as presented so for the board that is no, going to be their, so their completion. Okay. Motion by choice. Can I have a second? Second. Second by Molly. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> okay, so 6.3, which is the appointments. Um, so we're going to appoint uh, Human Resources Payroll and Benefits Assistant, Emily Toro Matun, and um, Hadley Police Department Dispatchers, Ethan Nesbitt and Gabriel, Gabriel Chambers. Please here, Johnny. Do you so want to make it introduce? Yeah. Come on up. So I'd like to introduce Emily in person. Um, she wanted to come in to meet you all herself. Okay. And we're going to start Emily on um, Tuesday. January 16th, and I'm very excited to put her in that seat in the office and get her started on helping with payroll and so many other projects. I'm going to let you, Emily, tell you a little bit about it. Emily, what's your background a little bit? Um, so I come predominantly from the medical field. Um, currently, I'm a medical assistant, but pretty much it. I was an EMT for a little bit. Staying in the medical field predominantly, though. Doing a lot, a lot on the data entry side with medical right. billing and dealing with customer service on that end as well. Mm -hmm. It's like a little bit of detail orientation required there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Excellent. Well, welcome. welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Look forward to seeing you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll see you at Town Hall. <laughs> All right. Um, we we got dispatchers on. We got. I see. We got some dispatchers. Do we, do we need, I think we need to vote on it. Right? Hey, dispatchers. You could there. vote to appoint yeah, Emily, and then you could do a, you could do them all together, or you could do it separate. It does all together. I move we appoint both. Okay. Do you want me to read them out? Well, Megan's we, here. Yeah, Megan's okay. here. Okay. The, the dispatch, about the sure the dispatch supervisors. <laughs> dispatch supervisors here. Megan Cahill. Hi, Megan. Hi. Good evening. So we're recommending to hire both Ethan and Gabriel. Ethan Nesbitt is from Dalton, Mass. His most recent position is as the VIP concierge for a luxury resort in the Berkshires. So he has a lot of experience in customer service and dealing with people as well as technology. He has a keen interest in public safety and emergency telecommunications in particular. We're recommending that Ethan be hired as a full-time employee. Gabriel Chambers is a resident of Leeds, Mass. He's a recent graduate of the criminal justice program at Smith Vocational High School. He's currently a military police officer in the Army National Guard and wishes to become a dispatcher for the town of Hadley in progression towards his dream of becoming a state police officer when he's old enough. Uh, we recommend Gabe as a part-time employee for now with the hopes of promoting him to full-time once he's through the training program to fulfill our last dispatch opening. Thank you. So I'll make a motion to accept the recommendation from uh, Megan Cahill to appoint uh, Ethan Nesbitt and Gabriel Chambers to the uh, dispatch vacancies. Second. Okay, motion by Molly, seconded by um, Joyce. Can we just have an amendment to also add Emily? Good job, Emily too. 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> and um, also to appoint uh, Emily Toro Matun as the new human resource payroll and benefits assistant. All right. All right. Motion by Molly, seconded by Joyce. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. All right. Um, is there any items for future discussion that we would like to add to a future meeting? Yes. All right. Scott McCarthy contacted me today questioning the town's, um, let's see, rationale, if you will, and i that's my word, not his, uh, of plowing certain private roads. Um, I know it's been a policy in town, but he's called me about a road that's in severe disrepair, and he's very concerned about destroying town equipment. So I think we need to have a discussion about how we want to deal with situations like that. What roadway is that? Uh, it's got no name. I wouldn't be specific. Yeah. Huh? I it, wouldn't be specific because it's future agenda item. It's a future agenda item. Yeah. Okay. So we can add that for sure. <clears throat> I had uh, mentioned before talking about uh, communication protocol. Just who responds to whom and when, and just general discussion about that when we have inquiries coming in. I thought we had we had gone over private ways at one point. Did we not, Scott, on um, certain roadways on um, um, whether or not about plow? It. Have yeah. we gone yeah. over that at nausea, I think, over the years? So I think okay. there's a specific question. And again, yeah. I would I would yeah, definitely I'll, want to discuss okay, that at a future meeting. All right. For sure. One more time. All right. Anyone have anything else? Okay. Um, any liaison reports? I could do one. Wait, mm -hmm. I might do that. What I have to say will probably take up the time we have. So I don't mean. Sorry, public comments is only three minutes. You don't get eight. No. <laughs> I can do one really quickly while you're looking for that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Housing and Economic Development Committee met, uh, as you recall, with both the Select Board and the Planning Board to talk about moving forward with an educational housing forum um, for open to the public. Um, tentatively, we've landed on uh, the last week of February and then a follow-up Q&A program the first week of March. I believe the, the date, again, tentatively is February 27th. For the housing forum, um, we're in the process of putting together uh, and confirming speakers for that and content, um, and so more to come on that front. <laughs> so, um, our staff sergeant Mike Romano uh, had had received an award from the Western Mass Chief Associations. Um, just a brief history of Mike has been with the force since 2014. Uh, in 2015, he was signed as the school resource officer for Hadley. Mike had never had a role like this, and there was no blueprint for how to perform these duties. He built the foundation for Hadley's SRO program, which now has multiple officers certified, and each of our schools welcomes us because of the relationships Mike forged with administrators, staff, and most especially the students. In 2018, Mike was promoted to sergeant and has taken control of the vast array of administrative programs. He handles our entire cruiser fleet maintenance program, and he has been facilitating one of the first fully operated body camera programs in our area. Most recently, he laid the groundwork for our main marine patrol, which allows our department to contribute to the Connecticut River Task Force to help keep the Local Waterways, a safe place for all to enjoy. He was recognized with his title of Staff Sergeant and demonstrates that he is our senior most sergeant and one of the most highly respected and trusted officers in our agency. It means so much for our organization to have the Western Mass Chief Association select him for this award. Each year, the organization gives out several awards and scholarships, but I personally feel that this award is the most prestigious when I was that, notified that Mike was selected, I contacted his wife, who has been uh, by his side throughout 
his diagnosis and treatment, and we worked out a plan to keep it a secret from him. So in my role as president of Western Mass Chiefs, I was honored to not only be able to announce his name, but was also the pure surprise in his eyes when he was when he won. So Mike has certainly um, been awarded this. He uh, battled his uh, uh, leukemia that he was diagnosed and um, the town rallied around him and supported him. And he's come back full force, he light duty first and has uh, done a, a really good job. So, you know, very pleased um, that he has won this award. So congratulations to Mike. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Take up enough time? Almost. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think you have some announcements. Or can you just announce? Sorry, I think that's just Okay. Uh, Jane, but can you, do you have some announcements? I do. I can do those quickly. So part of my duties of this uh, select board has been uh, to, to pass our condolences on to uh, family members who have, uh, we've had uh, town residents that have passed um, of late, it has been Robert Rodak. Um, his family is well known here in Hadley, so our condolences to the Rodak family. He was born and raised here, went to Hopkins, and um, uh, did farm work throughout on the, on the uh, Rodak farm. Uh, Eleanor Burak um, was a staple in our town and the school system and the cafeteria. She was well known, very dedicated to our students in the lunchroom. Um, she was also a minister, ministry, right, ministry. Minister, ministry. ministry at the Holy Redeemer Church. Um, our condolences to Eleanor's family. Alice Underwood, she was sister of Shirley Parsons and uh, Nancy Johnson. Our condolences to Parsons family and any other relatives that she may have. Edward Mitchellowski, um did not live here in town at this time, but was a graduate of Hopkins Academy. And his parents were Edward uh, Mitch Bosky and Stella Jesoric. We also have the passing of Rosemary Bristol Skiba. Her maiden name was Bai. Um, her daughter Bonnie um, lived here in town. Her son predeceased her, and her grandchildren are Tony and Jackie. So our condolences to them. We also had the passing of the Basilica Arthur Verdi. Um, she is the mother of Elaine Princevelli of Hadley, and she also had three other sons. So our condolences to uh, the Slipka's family. And then that's what I have. That was my great aunt. Oh. And then <laughs> Valeska. No. Oh. And then just going back to the housing forum dates, luckily the okay. person in charge of booking the senior center is nearby. <laughs> um, so the uh, planned dates are Thursday, February 29th. Yes. That is the 29th, it is a leap year, um, and followed by a question and answer period after that informational session on March 7th. Thanks, Jean. Okay. Um, anyone have any other announcements? Or Leah, you have another one? I do. Okay. I'll do it quickly. So. My, I was going to do it at the end, but I guess I'll do it now. So happy new year to everybody. And um, I've been asked on numerous occasions if, if I'm going to run again this uh, this spring and I'm not. So I am uh, stating that I am not going to run. I'm giving enough notice to people who would like to um, have this position. Um, I first started in 1988 on the school committee and had 15 years, five terms on the school committee. And um, I've had, this at the end of this year, it'll be seven terms on the select board. So um, I hope I have, it's hard to say this, um, should have done it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope I have served, served the town well, and I have enjoyed it. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Joyce. Here. Thank you. <laughs> You're still going to be here. I'm still, and, I'm not, and I'm not gone. Yet. I still, I'm, I will still be gnawing at you. So, yeah. And just remember, only 15 minutes for public comment. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. So, yes. So, anyway, that was my thing for this oh. evening. So that it would give people time to do whatever they would like to do for the coming elections. And then we'll plan the party location. <laughs> <laughs> and look, it's 6 30. Perfect. 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 All right. <coughs> I think we have 
Hi. Hello. Happy New You're Year. You're like a staple at our Happy meetings year. now. <laughs> there we go. You got tired of the planning board now. You came over That's here. That's right. They don't meet in person, so it's good to see people. <laughs> do you want me to go? Do you want to read the public notice? We're okay. So just open it here. Okay. Just open oh, here and get great. Okay. So they're looking to alter their premise. Sure. Yep. So for the record, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson out of Amherst here on behalf of uh, Game Over, doing business as the Quarters, which is over on 8 Real Road Court. Uh, and yeah, what they're looking to do is alteration of the premises. And so there's really two parts to it. One of them involves the outdoor space, and the outdoor space has existed um since 2014, but the most recent outdoor space uh, came into existence in 2021. There was a, a governor order that allowed it to exist. And now the law has changed where April 1st, 2024, if you haven't gone through this formal, uh, formal alteration of premises process, then it reverts back to what the license premise was prior to that um, governor's order. So that's part of what we're doing. So it's really more of a formalization of that exterior space. And then the second piece of the alteration of premises is for some about 900 square feet of interior space. Um, the business was fortunate enough to get some of the interior space, uh, which I believe the lease wasn't renewed. And so it's just, if you're looking at it, it's to the right uh, on the inside. And that's that's about 900 square feet of that interior space. And so really simply all they're asking for is to alter that license premise to include that 900 square feet of interior space and that, uh, and then formalizing that it's about 700 square feet of additional exterior space. Are they doing modifications or just adding it? Yeah, they're, they're so the outside, and I think you've got this in your floor plan, um, I mean, they've got some barriers on the outside. There's some seating on the outside. And then on the inside, I think they're about through the building permit process where they've received, I think they've received sign off uh, for CO for those spaces. Uh, so yeah, they are making some interior improvements to make it usable space. I think it was storage space previously. Have they been to the planning board? They have not. And our understanding is that we don't have to go through the planning board. I would. We have. I have. You, you've talked to the planning board? I have to, I've checked with the planning board, with the building inspector, with the fire chief, and the police chief. And they're... Everybody is in compliance and, and knowledge about this and have reviewed the plans. My one question just related to that would be the, the obvious, which is always parking. And I know that the quarters went through that previously and satisfied, so this won't have any impact if the planning board would have said so. Right? I, I, I would assume that the planning board, well, look, Mr. Dwyer just raised himself up. Oh, good. <laughs> Mr. Dwyer, help. <laughs> we previously did have a discussion with a uh, architect representative of um, the business. Um, we determined that the um, there was no need to come to the planning board for the exp internal expansion because it did not trigger any of the criteria for site plan approval. We did approve enlargement of the outdoor seating area back in March, I think it was. The site has adequate parking, but as a condition of approving the expansion of the outdoor space, we did ask that they activate what had been uh, earmarked as reserve parking. And I believe they have done that on the westerly side or easterly side of the building. It's a long, narrow lot that actually uh, goes all the way out to Middle Street. So uh, what they have been using for parking is on the westerly side of the building, but they, they also have all the green space on the easterly side available for parking. So we... Uh, and remember here, the parking is determined on the basis of the size of the structure, the business use of the structure, not the particular use of the entity. So um, we, we had previously determined that there was adequate parking for the structure and there is adequate parking for the outside dining area on the 
premises. Thank you. Um, and just being squeaky clean here, I just want to disclose that my oldest child runs Trivial Matters um, at the quarters. So I don't believe it impairs my judgment, but I just want to make sure <laughs> people are aware of that. You play too many games. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's employed. <laughs> All right. Good to me. Any questions? Any other questions? Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Jane, seconded by Joyce. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Beautiful. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you. See you soon. May Thank all you. of you be yes. yes. short. Yes. 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 <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Good. You too, Tom. Still sleeping. sleeping. Nice. Still sleeping. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. All right. And last but not least, 6.1. Mount Warner and Mount Holyoke Water Storage Tank Project. And Scott is here. And there are individuals online as well. Yes. Right? Yeah. All right. And um, Tithe and Bond engineers are here as well. Yes. On the line. All right. Uh, good evening. Uh, just wanted to bring an update to you about the Mount Warner uh, and Mount Holyoke water storage tanks. Uh, kind of decision time for the uh, Board of Water Commissioners to determine our next uh, steps. Uh, Randy, our liaison, has been involved with this a little bit, so he knows a little bit what's going on. But uh, just for an update, in our sanitary survey from the DEP in uh, late 2021, it was brought to the attention that our water tanks needed some uh, work. Uh, uh, painting and et cetera. Uh, in the spring of 2022 at the annual town meeting, the town approved $310,000 for us to uh, try to paint the water tanks. As we started looking into this project uh, and we found out that it is a lot more complicated than you think to paint a water tank and et cetera. So we decided to uh, uh, have Ty and Bond come look at this project and give us uh, their opinion on the matter. And it comes to uh, it comes to us that the tanks are starting to get close to their life expectancy. So there's kind of two options with this. Uh, there's a rehab, you know, possibility or uh, replacement. And uh, it, it's a very complex project and. It's pricey also, and and uh, Danielle Textera and Jeff Faulkner are here from Ty and Bond to uh, give you a little presentation on our findings thus far on the project. Hi everyone, um, my name is Danielle Texera with Ty and Bond. I'm project manager working um, on this project, and then there's also uh, Jeff Faulkner is, is on the line too. Um, he's the project director. Um, so I have a presentation here. I'm just going to share my screen. Um, um, everyone can see that? Yes. Yeah. Great. All right, so we just talked about uh, Mount Warner and Mount Holyoke water storage tanks. So um, these are some um, aerial photos of the site plans for each of these sites. So the Mount Warner um, photo on the top, uh, the the yellow box is from, I think the assessor's website, I think it needs to be adjusted. So I just drew in what um, we're assuming as the property boundary there, but the Mount Water Warner tank was constructed in 1963. It's a 68-foot diameter tank um, with a height of about 35 feet on a parcel of 0.21 acres. The Mount Holyo tank um, is a little bit newer, constructed in 1976, 60-foot diameter and um, a 50-foot height on that tank in a parcel size of about 0.5 acres. Um, so as Scott mentioned, there was an inspection conducted in 2022. Um, Underwater Solutions inspected exterior and interior of both of those takes and recommended that um, they be rehabilitated um, as there were signs of exposed steel and corrosion. 
So we did, um, we performed an alternatives analysis where we looked at uh, re rehabilitation versus construction of new tanks um, and a couple of different types of tanks. Uh, during that analysis, we looked at site constraints. Um, they're on very tight parcels, which makes construction of new tanks a little bit difficult. Um, they're also surrounded by um, Massachusetts owned um, Article 97 land, which really can't be touched. Um, and <clears throat> they, we also looked at time of construction, how long it would take to construct each different type of tank. So I'm just going to go through kind of a little bit more in depth of all the alternatives and how we came out to our um, proposed alternatives. So the first, the rehabilitation, uh, both of the tanks would need a new coating system on the interior and exterior of the tanks. Um, those coating systems only last about approximately 20 years. So as, as Scott had mentioned, um, so the total lifetime of steel tank is around 80 years. So for the Mount Warner tank, it would basically one rehabilitation um, before you would need to uh, replace that tank. Mount Holyoke is a little bit newer. You might be able to get rid of, get by with two rehabilitation cycles, but ultimately they would be needing, um, both would be needing new construction soon. Uh, the rehabilitation is slightly lower costs, uh, but the maintenance um, is very expensive, as you'll see soon. So we also looked at ground level pre-stressed concrete tank. So this would be construction of a new tank. Um, this option had the highest capital cost and the construction um, constraints here are a little bit difficult. Um, you need a lot of space on the site to construct one of these tanks because um, the, the concrete panels take up a lot of space um, when they're actually constructing the tank. And the total construction period is quite long, uh, six months, which is difficult to have a tank offline for that long amount of time. The expectancy, life expectancy for this tank is, is about 80 years and there is minimal uh, maintenance required um, when compared to a steel tank. And then the other option we looked at was a composite um, ground level glass fused steel water storage tank. So this one has a lower lifetime um, cost and a much shorter construction period uh, compared to the concrete tank. Um, this is really only, can only be provided by one vendor, which is Aquastore. And it's a little bit newer to water storage tank pot potable use in general, but there are several tanks um, being used and have been constructed and are, are working very well. Um, the life expectancy for these tanks is around 75 years. And again, uh, minimal maintenance is required for these tanks. Um, so based on cost, site constraints, um, and the time of construction, um, we are proposing going with the ground level glass view steel tank. So this is a conceptual cost summary table um, comparing the rehabilitation, which is on the bottom line, with the glass fused steel on the top line, and then the concrete tank in the middle. So as you can see, the, the capital cost for water storage tank rehabilitation is, you know, the same order of magnitude as, similar order of magnitude as the, the capital cost for construction of a new tank. So with that alone, um, 1.1 million for rehab versus a 1.3 for new construction. Um, it really makes sense to just do the new construction at this point in time. Um, these costs all come from directly from vendors' uh, proposals, and they only include the cost of the tank itself. So it does not include site work. Um, it does not include any additional um, any additional features of the tank. So it, Mount Warner uh, would also need a, a new altitude valve, some electrical updates, new fence. Both of them need new safety um, appurtenances. They both need mixing systems. So when all is said and done from design through construction for both of these tanks for the new construction, we'd be looking at a cost of around $9 million on that order of magnitude. Um, is what we would need to fund that project. 
And here is the <clears throat> preliminary project schedule. So we're hoping to ob obtain um, some funding through USDA. Um, it's a 40 year loan at low interest rate and there is principal forgiveness um, on that loan, but we first need to get um, the funding approval at the town meeting before we could get a sign off from USDA on their application. So assuming that the spring town meeting is where we would get the approval, then we would submit the USDA DA application um, and start the design of the tank in the fall of 2024. Um, go through bidding in the winter so that we could get construction started um, by the spring of 2025. Um, we would do one tank at a time so we wouldn't have both offline at the same time. Um, and we would probably do at Mount Warner first, um, followed by Mount Holyoke. And the project would hopefully be finished by the spring of um, 2026. So that's all I have for the presentation. Um, One question. Is is it the removal of the other tanks also? Yes. Okay. The other tanks are being re removed. And yeah, the one that's not in use on, including the one that is not in use on Mount Warner. So both of those tank. would be re removed, removed yes. and then one put in its yes. place. Yes. Okay. And there's only one tank on Mount Holyoke. Correct. Mm -hmm. Public funding uh, for this? Well, some found it here right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There, Any there, grants out there? The, the only, the only uh, thing available uh, would be some loan forgiveness at this point from the USDA. But until, like Danielle said, we don't know what that is until we start going through the process. And that's why I'm here tonight to ask what are our next steps? We have to do something with this, whether... Uh, it's the rehab or the replacement uh, where it's mandated by the DEP. We have to do something. And into which one it is, I, I would really recommend probably replacement. As you, you, you've you seen in her presentation, it, it's uh, what, $3 million to uh, refurbish or $8 million to replace. We're, you're, we're going to have to replace it eventually. If it's not this cycle, it's the next one. So in 20 years or 15 or what have you, what's the cost going to be then? It's only going to get be more expensive. Can I just ask a question? One of the, I was a little bit confused about one of the slides. Um, I think the one that was showing the lifetime costs under the refurbishment where it showed, you know, the cost to refurbish being, you know, yeah. com very comparable to replacing yeah. it. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yep. For the rehab, it has a 95-year lifetime compared to 75 and 80 for brand new construction. Because the rehab is 20, will give you an additional 20 years plus after 20 years, you have to replace it with one of the two above options. That's correct. So yeah, Molly, it's 95 years total and we're already in it for 70. Okay. All right. Got it. So it's not like we're getting another. Yeah. And, and, de and depending if, yeah. if something happens, if the if there was fatigue of metal in the tank, et cetera, it, it could be, you know, deemed in, inefficient a lot sooner. We, we don't know. There's really, uh, we're going off a report of divers that are diving inside the tank, visually looking at the, you know, the inside and the outside. There is some, you know, things that need to be addressed. And and what's happening in the metal between those two points, there's really no way to tell. So there's really no compelling argument for rehab. I mean, it's not. Mm -hmm. I was just going to. And it's not moving the ball forward. I was going right. to um, ask. I know that we cut the recommendation was, um, you know, based on cost, but um, is there much of a, the difference as far as like our climate and our weather between the pre-stressed concrete or the um, glass fused to steel, like? Uh, so uh, they're, the glass fused, they're, they're in the Northeast. Uh, 
before the Christmas break, we Southampton has one. We we took a ride out to Southampton with Diane Bomb and the vendor looked at the tank. Uh, I forget Danielle. It, it's ten years old or so. Yeah, I believe so. It, it's about ten years old and. Mm, it's in excellent shape. All, all they did to it was uh, pressure washed it. it. It's 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 like the new thing with water tanks, the glass views. It's basically uh, the same style of tanks that are at the Barstow Farm. If you ride by there, it's the mm -hmm. same kind of like the same. Uh, type, yeah, yeah. Uh, we did when we were in the area. We went and looked at a, a pre-stressed concrete. To I mean, it's concrete. It ages. It you know grows moss and etc there's maintenance cost on it but the, the biggest thing with us is the site constraints and then the downtime too uh the downtime's a killer for us uh because we take mount warner offline you know there's potential uh pressure problems so we need to get back up and running as fast as possible mm -hmm. and the uh the glass fused it, it's a lot faster constructed how long has that technology been around, Scott? Can you answer that, Danielle? I don't have the. Um, I... I can add to that, yeah. Danielle. Um, it, it's been around over, over 25, 30 years um, in the water industry. It's also been used um, in the farming community as for silos uh, for even longer than that. Um, the glass fused to steel is a panel based methodology so it's manufactured essentially off-site uh, comes to the the site as panels and it's constructed relatively quickly if, if there is a failure on a panel you can literally drain down the tank unbolt that panel and they can bolt another one in place do they have any kind of warranty on these things yeah there would be a warranty as part of the the construction project how how long are we talking? Um, it, at least the the one year standard warranty for a construction project, but uh, extended warranties could be discussed. Uh, but in general, they uh, the issues re relating to failure are more so uh, not from a failure of the the tank itself, but uh, uh, you know a lawnmower throwing a rock at the exterior, you know something of that nature. So there's actually um, the liner within the outside containment, you know, like how the digester is made. You have that blue thing on the outside, but there must be, is there an inside liner? Is that what you're talking about on the water tank? So on the, the glass fused to steel tanks are similar to how uh, your hot water tank is at your house where it's yeah. um a, like a, a baked on enamel to the to the metal so it's almost like a a coating if you will um that's that's why they call it a composite tank cuz it's got uh mixed materials within the panel itself but it's, it looks like a glazed glass yeah, that's in interior and exterior okay. so one yeah, it's, it's homo homogeneous through the inside and outside I had a water tank with, with the solar panels that probably lasted 22 years before it started leaking, but I'm sure that the... I mean, there is the there is maintenance involved with it. Uh, there's the anoids in there uh, for protection, you know, the, that would have to be changed out, et cetera. So, you know, the any acidity in the water is eating an anoid in that, you know, the tank and things of that nature. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said, the one we looked at in Southampton, uh, all they did was regular routine maintenance to it. They haven't done anything. They haven't done any problems. And how long it, has it been up? It, that's about 10 years. It, it was the closest one in the area. There's others around, but we, we just went to the closest option for us to go look at it. Uh, and they haven't had any trouble with it at all. Uh, I, I think it's a good option for us. I, I look, from my experience, everyone was uh, always pre-stressed concrete. That's the best way. That's the best way. And uh, at our last water meeting, we, we talked to the Athol DPW. I don't know if you, you go down route two, you can see an elevated one there. Uh, that's just the same style tank, but it's elevated. And he said that he would never 
dream about doing a priest trust concrete after doing the uh last line. That's why market basket there. Yeah, uh, that's mm -hmm. the one. Yeah. yeah. Scott, I, I just checked the the one that you saw was actually from nineteen ninety one. So okay. thirty thirty two years sure. old. Okay, it's a lot old. Yeah. 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 And they haven't had any trouble at all. And and the other Serious factor is the speed of impact of installation. Yes. So, so the the tank is built from the they they would build the roof first, and then they have a a jacking system that they raise it up, put panels, raise it up, put panels. Uh, you know, every, all the panels are made off site and brought to our site, and they just form it and jack it and, and raise it, and put it together. So, what kind of ceiling is between the panels as they construct it to keep them? There, there is gasking material yes. in there. Okay. Yep. And does that ever wear out or? Uh the the Southampton tank we looked at uh, did have a uh, some I'll call it caulking, but it's not. It's like a urethane that it was touched up. Okay. But it is. Relatively it, simple. Yes. To, yes. To that's, do. That's yeah. the question. Yeah. Okay. So, explain <laughs> how the the application for funding would work. I we have to go to town meeting, get approval for what? Start the process. Well, oh, well to, yeah. to do yeah. To get a loan. Well, yeah. That, so, uh, if you want, I can describe the USDA funding process a bit. Mm -hmm. Would that be helpful? Please, yes. Okay. So USDA, um, you, you know, United States Department of Agriculture, uh, they have a, a rural development program for water and, and wastewater projects. Uh, so this fits your community very well. Uh, they're for communities that are under 10,000 in population, and they have a loan grant program. Uh, there are two big advantages to you is that you can extend a loan on it for a 40-year term. Most uh, construction projects are 20, maybe 30-year loans. Uh, the 40-year loan gives you an extended period to, to pay back the project. Uh, the other advantage is their grant portion, which uh, you would most likely qualify for, but they won't uh, document how much grant you'll get until you get deep into the application process. Um, we're we're actually in the process of starting the application on the town's behalf, but the USDA won't consider it complete until they have proof that the town has appropriated the funds for the project. So the application can't be uh, deemed uh, acceptable and to move forward until after a town meeting approves those dollars. So it's it's a little bit of a chicken in the egg. You kind of want to know the grant you're getting, but they can't tell you the grant until you've funded the project. Um, so you have to take a, a little bit of a faith uh, leap of faith to move forward at the full project value with the, the hope that you're going to get some significant grants, uh, which could range uh, 20, 30, 40% of, of the, the total project being grant dollars. But again, you know, only determined after they review the, the full application. So the, the grant dollars that you're talking about, that's principal forgiveness? Not principal forgiveness. Um, they would actually uh, start the project and you would, uh, I'll, I'll use a million dollars because it's easy numbers and it, I'll give you a 20% loan uh, grant. So you would do uh, 800,000 of loan. And then once the project has hit that dollar value, then every month they would, they would give you money to fund that month's bills as grant funds. So it would be a, a monthly wire transfer for grant funds. And Jeff, what sort of interest rate is USDA right now? So 40 year, up to 40 year loan term and what kind of interest? Yeah, they have three tiers. Um, call it low, middle, and in, in market. Um, the one that you will qualify for is to be determined, but I would say at least not one step below market, so a, a lower interest rate than, than market. Obviously, market interest rates are relatively high at the moment. Uh, they lock in the interest rate when they approve the application, but if the project moves forward and the interest rates drop, they do allow you to relock or lock it in at the lower rate. Um, I don't have the exact percentages in front of me at the moment. 
But I mean, we're not looking at 10%. We're looking at maybe four six, or five six range. Point five maybe. Uh, yeah. Point. Yeah. Whatever the town might be able to get on the open market, probably one or 2% less on the, the USDA side. Okay. And Jeff, just, just for uh, doing this as a combined project, I know we talked about this. There is a little bit of price savings that, uh, you know, mobilization charges, et cetera. It, it, it is a little more cost effective to do both at once. Could you describe a little more cost effective? <laughs> <laughs> These money people. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is some savings. I don't, uh, they'd have to get the exact, the exact numbers, but there is, we did talk about it. Yeah, that. I think this is very, you know, we bring Linda in on this to, yeah, so I and that's where the kind of the steps we wanted to take was this is probably our third or fourth meeting with right. Danielle and um, Jeff, and we felt we really needed to come to you guys. But the next step would to be to sit with the finance team, sit with on a monthly basis. We have Molly coming in from the select board and we have Amy coming in from finance committee to say, look, this is what we're looking at. Um and then to be able to get that input as the as Linda's a part of that and is in charge of borrowing pretty much. So we would want to put this whole put this together because we also need to look at our other projects and we want to bring back that long term capital planning committee to bring this into it as well. What we need though is the approval to get this on the as as I'm putting the warrant together to have this on the warrant. You're not committing yourself right now, but to just yeah, the worst case scenario we. We plan on putting it on the warrant, and if for whatever reason we're not ready, we can pull it or pass over it. Right. Definitely. So is there any, like, on the off chance or on whatever chance, it's hard to say, um, this gets shot down at town meeting. Are there um, ramifications for us not updating as directed by the was it de dp -E yes there, there would be uh financial? consequences for not meeting their requirements and what those are I, I cannot answer to but there would definitely be uh, uh some issues with that okay you have you have to meet the safe the safe drinking water act etc there's you know laws that we have to abide by this this isn't uh, you know, the, a wish list. It's it's a it's a mandate. So it's an unfunded mandate. To, uh, yes. Yeah. So we have to do something. We have right. to decide what it is. Right. We would like to do. Yeah. And the ongoing, like the once uh, construction occurs, the ongoing maintenance costs. How does that compare to what we have right now? It would it would it would be very very similar. Uh, you know, like pressure washing. That's at a minimal. Uh, the the, the 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 cycle of diving the chick the tank to inspect it we already do that it's it's the same kind of maintenance cost that we're incurring now there's it'll really no difference <laughs> it'll look the maintenance <laughs> so, I don't but, mean to laugh but yeah it's a it's the price yeah, it, we're paying for right, the whole package right now. and then it seems like it's it's very easily maintained from the outside where we could see at Southampton that just pressure washing from the ground level, it, it's fairly easily washed off the, the coating on it. It's like a, like a window, a glass, it, it, whatever debris comes off relatively easy. Mm -hmm. um, in the, I was gonna ask Great. also, is the, the cost for the construction of these, is it just solely the two tanks or is it also include like any gravel that needs to go around it, any fencing for preventing wildlife and humans from going near it yeah this is a this is a complete project uh you know lock sock and barrel uh whatever it would our our current parameters that we requested uh uh a new out at mount warner there's a problem with the altitude valve the vault is too small it doesn't meet confined space standards etc etc all that would be uh addressed in this tank in a mount warner there would be a new pipeline from the street to the tank, because that's another thing that's somewhat in limbo up there of placement. If, if exactly where it is, we don't know. 
Uh, but we have the property surveyed now, so we know where our bounds are, so we can definitely get a new pipeline on our property. And uh, same amount, Hoyoke, uh, the vault and stuff doesn't meet any kind of uh, standards for the mine space, et cetera, et cetera, for us to work in. So, and things like that would be updated with the project. And we do have like static mixers and things in them that, uh, you know, that would be new and replaced that we do have maintenance costs on now that they're starting to have some age on them. So, so from your experience, you're encouraging us to look at the glass tank rather than concrete. Yes. Uh, like I said, the, the biggest reason why I think is the time. It, it's, it's so much faster to do. We just, when you take Mount Warner offline, there's going to be, a little bit of an issue maybe uh in a couple of higher areas that Oh, um, can you move that security thing out of there? That's Alex, oh, too. Yeah, hello. I was going to ask earlier, but I don't want to interrupt anyone. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, I just said disconnected. It's a computer. So, is it possible to find another space at the Mount Warner area and build the new tank before you take the other one offline? Uh, no, there's not because okay. it's all. Uh, Alex, are we broadcasting? Yeah. Okay. All right. It, it's, it's, uh, I, I, Danielle, trustees a reservation. Yeah, the trustees own it, and then the the, mount, the reservation. Uh, we own a very small piece of property there, so we looked at that, and uh, when we were at one time, Carolyn had said, "Well, how about another site in general?" But unfortunately, it doesn't really work. That work way. That yeah, way. Your pumps, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. For if somebody were to ask, do we have? Total construction numbers for the concrete mm -hmm. tanks. You're telling us it's nine million to do the glass tanks. Do we have total construction cost mm -hmm. estimates for the concrete tanks? Yeah. So the difference between the concrete and the glass you steel is um, like two hundred to five hundred thousand per. So um, for let me just pull up. So to replace um, Mount Warner and Mount Holyoke is 1.3 and 1.5 respectively for the, the glass views. And then the concrete is 1.6 and 1.7. So that 9 million number is conceptual inclusive of the glass views. So it would be um, 200 to $500,000 more to go concrete. Okay, thank you. All right, I move that we accept your recommendation and go forward with putting the glass tanks on the spring mark. Start the process. Yeah, I'll second that. All right, motioned by Jane, seconded by Randy. Any further discussion or questions? Um, just one quickly. <clears throat> it's part of the analysis. I mean, get no, no crystal ball, but interest rates are going to start coming down. Question of how quickly and over what period of time and, and where they're ultimately going to get to. So in, in looking at the cost, um, you know, staggering can actually have some advantages on the borrowing side, even though it might have negatives on the cost, the construction side of it. So could you just wrap that into your... Analogy. And that, yeah, the, the <laughs> analysis as you go through. Yes. Did, did you hear that, Danielle? Yes. Yeah. The construction costs will significantly increase over time um, when compared to the interest rate. So it does make sense to do them sooner rather than waiting. Okay. And one of the advantages of being remote is I did look up the interest rates right now. Uh, USDA has the, the three tiers, as I mentioned. The low one is 2.25%, just posted January 1st. Uh, the middle one is 3%, and the market rate is 3.75. So 
you know, it's a market. It's even depressed over what you can probably get in the the municipal market today, outside of USDA. And that gave me a chance to run an amortization schedule, and it means that on a nine million dollar project over forty years, even at three and a quarter, we're looking at a monthly payment of thirty three thousand. So we're really going to want to get that grant. Yeah, and, and part of and part of our process too, uh, Ty and Bond was going to look at our water rates also, um, mm -hmm. because that obviously right. that's probably going to have to be adjusted accordingly. Go back them off the board, will you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing we've looked at. Don't make me an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> I said, don't make me an asshole. Don't make me an asshole. But yeah, no, but those are all, I mean, the taxpayers need to know all of this. Yeah, yeah. no, I understand yeah. that. And, and I'm well, trying to be really honest with this. We're going to start the process. I assume we will see more from you before town, more, yeah. town meeting shows up. Yes, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, like uh, Ty and Bond's been excellent to work with on this project. And uh, I'm sure they'll have all our questions ready to be answered. Well, they've been, they've been here as long as I have, over 21 years we've worked with Ty and Bond, so... They've been a staple in Hadley, so. We do have an open uh, motion on the. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yep. we do. All right, Go so all, all those in favor? Aye. All right, excellent. Thank you guys for coming to yep. visit with us and explain everything and just answer all of our questions. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have Good night. night. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm sorry to always come to your meeting and ask you for crazy amounts of money, but just unfortunately, sure. that's your job. You know, you know, <laughs> Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Uh, but I have to get a job in a different state. Yeah. Take those money down for me. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Yeah. All right, thank you. Good night, Scott. Good night. I believe I just need one more motion for the night. I move to adjourn. Second. All right, motioned by Jane, seconded by Randy. All those in favor? Aye.